On the twelfth day of Christmas, name we know he's gave to me. Twelve pork chops biting, eleven murdered Santas, ten giant fruitcakes, nine jelly donuts, eight works for happy, seven bombs a ticking, six teens a drinking, five he he he's. Four free funzos, three Corvettes, two drinks of sherry, and peed and peed in a pear tree. Wow, that was a nice, uh, nice soprano there. <laughs> a good bass. <base>. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Welcome to Namely 90s. The podcast that takes you back to the time before smartphones, Google, and Y2K. Join your hosts as they relive the pop culture that shaped a generation and the parts that many people wish they could forget. Listen in to the conversation about how the decade defined those who spent their childhood there and how it shaped them as adults. So... Turn down the grunge and dial up the internet. Let's get started. It's time for Namely 90s. That's right. You're listening to Namely 90s. My name's Andrew and over there is Brandon. That's me. You can find us online at <laughs> Namely90s.com or on Instagram and Blue Sky at Namely 90s and Namely 90s.bsky.social. You can also find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Namely 90s. And if you'd like to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash Namely 90s to get signed up for one of our support levels. And a big welcome to day 12 of our fourth annual 12 Days of Christmas specials. Happy New Year, and we're happy to introduce a new guest to our podcast. We have Nick and Jim of the We Thought This Was Good podcast. We thought this was good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for joining us. <laughs> good. How are, how are you? Uh, great. Now that Andrew's voice is out of my also, head. Also, I'm just going to add a section <laughs> about. Unfortunately, <laughs> I, due to a scheduling conflict, cannot be at today's recording. So I thank our guests for coming on and hope you guys have a blast talking about this episode of Doug. And, and you as well, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Now he's out of my head. That's so much better. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on and joining us. Uh, happy 2024, everyone out there. Yeah. Right, guys. Um, it's new, new Year's Day um, or New Year. Yeah. New Year's Day. That There's mm-hmm. an apostrophe S. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah. Uh, tell us. Tell us a little bit about uh, we thought this was good. Yeah. So we're we're buddies for for years now. Uh, we we have a mutual friend that Jim was his roommate in college, and he was my friend growing up. And then as we moved out of like college years and we got married, we ended up moving around the suburbs of Illinois near each other and stayed in touch. And then as we had kids, we started just we would always talk back and forth about all the movies we watched with our kids, how bad they were, how they were ridiculous. And we ended up getting into a conversation about like, you know, well, hear these crappy movies today and then we start talking about oh our, you know, the movies we grew up on those are the good ones and then we started revisiting and we're like maybe these ones aren't even all that great either so then we started joking about um you know that'd be that'd be funny to listen to like here's some you know some dads or here here are parents that actually rewatch the movies that they that they loved and see if they even held up and i had a music podcast for years and i was like well, i still have some equipment like you know i kind of know how to do it and we just knock it around and started recording them and just yeah yeah that's, that's how it came to life. That's awesome. Uh, I feel like Andrew would have been better equipped to interview you guys. He's uh, of the two of us. He's the better interviewer. And also he's a dad as well. So I'm sure he can relate <laughs> to, to throwing a podcast together. Yeah, uh, definitely. You guys have covered um, some, some of my favorites, uh, mm-hmm. including free Willy, uh, mighty oh, ducks. Yeah. Um, some of your favorites, meaning like actual childhood favorites are like bad, like, revisit <laughs> but i mean honestly both it's it's because yeah. you know it's it's held up in your mind so much and yes. as you guys as you guys uh, have Absolutely. seen it's like what why why did i even watch this and specifically the three ninjas episode oh my um, god i mean just the kicker like your teaser for that like had me in stitches <laughs> nostalgia does wild things to <laughs> your memory of how things actually were yeah we're this season as we're so we're like halfways in recording season two right and now and even some of these ones that you're just like well those are obviously i mean they're they classic. Be like, how could they be yeah how, yes. how could how could these be terrible and then i mean that's what makes us fun you're like okay that this is how this is specifically how <laughs> like some yeah. of the some of my favorite ones are the, like the sports ones because like 
where I'll just think of the, like, you know, the top of the, you know, the top of the iceberg. I, I will enjoy Jim getting so upset over the nitty gritty of like the baseball stats or any of the things that I'm just like stuff that I didn't even consider being annoying. And that's where I start to just like unravel. So that, that worries me. Does that mean the Sandlot is on season two? So that's funny that it's you meant coming. That. it's coming, <laughs> but I think some stay in the test of time, like home alone, yeah. Sandlot. I think there are mm-hmm. some that, you know, are going to be good and going to hold up. And then others that, I think we were questioning like angels in the outfield, <laughs> oh, oh no. which is like yeah. unanimously agreed as a classic. Yeah. JGL we, man. <laughs> yes. Just, just, How can you go around? Everyone, Matthew McConaughey, like that movie is stabbed. Adrian Brady. Yeah. And then we could not find it anywhere. And mm, then we're wondering if there's a reason. reason why. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're like, it's Disney. So this surely should be on Disney plus. Right. Like, mm-hmm. okay, and it's not. We both had to get it from the library <laughs> and even the librarians are like, Oh, that's a classic. And when we watched it, we were kind of mortified. <laughs> and they never made it back to the library. And question then, mark. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just went right into the incinerator. But yes. Uh, the Sandlot is coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, on your Instagram, you have like some blurry uh, teaser photos of what's coming up in season two. And yep. like some of them I, I recognize and the other ones are like, I don't I, I don't think I know what that one is. Right. So yeah, um, well, we've taken suggestions from people, too, that are like, oh, you have to watch this. And we've never heard of it. Yeah. Or like there are some movies where both of us have watched and remember watching a lot as kids. Some mm. that like one of us watched and the other has never Labyrinth. seen. So that's those are the. F- <laughs> Fun ones were like, yeah, one of us is in love with it, and the other's like, what in the hell is this thing? <laughs> yeah, Those are kind of the fun ones. Yeah. See, I, Andrew and I have that same thing, except I've seen everything and he's seen nothing. Oh, so, it, <laughs> it, yes. Um, and he will be adamantly not watching anything that he doesn't already like. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's just me throwing shade at him since he's not here. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, so, uh, oh, yeah, Rookie of the Year. You guys did Rookie of the Year, too. I, Rookie of yeah. the Year, yep. Another one. Like, haven't seen it in over 30 years, but I'm pretty <laughs> right. sure I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the, per- that's kind of like the pocket for this, for this podcast. It's just like, oh, I mean, I remember liking it. It's been a while. And I mean, sure. I mean, I don't remember it being bad. And then. Yeah, that next the the next one we're recording as a little you know we've obviously given our little sneak peeks as to what we're doing, but the next mm-hmm. one we're recording this week is Ladybugs, and there's just no way that that holds up. Like we're I've, like since we before we even started recording season two, I was like, I'm gonna enjoy recording all of them. I'm bookmarking that one. That one's gonna be a nightmare. I don't think I recall Ladybugs. Uh, uh, Rodney Dangerfield's a coach, and Jonathan um, Brandis has a dress up like a girl. Yes, exactly. Yep, yep. <laughs> exactly. Now I remember. Yes. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, no way it held up. Uh-uh. And it's PG thirteen. That's what yeah. Jim was saying. He's like, I don't think we've done a PG thirteen this year. I was like, Yeah, oh boy. And a nineteen nineties PG thirteen is gonna be brutal. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So uh, when when does season two drop? Do you guys have a tentative? Yeah. So we can we can tell you. It's uh, actually I was gonna post some this week, but January eighth. Uh, so awesome. we're bought, we're brought recorded. We've recorded like half the season, almost edited all of them, and uh, January eighth we'll put up the first one. So, so yeah, we're excited. They've been they've been fun. That's awesome. So that's a week away from when this drops. Um, right. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect <laughs> timing. Uh, and uh, is did did I already ask this? Did uh, this seems to be my arc this this year for the fourth fourth year of our twelve days of Christmas specials? I keep asking questions then immediately forgetting that i asked them <laughs> but did i did i already ask uh do you have a, a favorite from an episode coming up or uh can you tease something uh i guess you just teased some stuff but i don't know if there's any favorites you have we um i mean i'm already i guess i'm already looking forward to to uh ladybugs we haven't recorded yet but uh little giants that was a fun mm, one to- I, love, I like that one <laughs> some uh some some jokes that I don't remember uh, being so prevalent throughout the movie, but that that was another one. Like Little Giants, that's a classic. And we're like, mm, uh, Rick <laughs> Moranis, right? Yeah, I mean, right. and we, that's that was our second Rick Moranis one this year. So we're like, you know, we'll take all the Rick Moranis we can get. But uh, yeah, that that was one I had fun doing. I don't know if you had a favorite from this year. Nah, yeah, nothing yet. I think I'm bracing myself for Ladybugs. <laughs> I mean, we watched Little Rascals, and uh, yeah. my my kids had found that on Netflix not too long ago. And I was just like, damn, this movie holds up so well. Exactly as you remember it and it delivers. So I think as far as like 
movies that were exactly how I remembered it to be. That's been the most on the nose so far. Yeah. I'll I will have to listen to that episode because I I did something on Little Rascals at some point for maybe nineties and nice. I, I just watched I only watched like the clip of uh, Alpha Alpha's like. Oh uh, yeah, hair the springing boner. up. Yes, <laughs> the boner hair. Yeah. So um, little ra- it it is surprising. Like in like you said, we've both kind of seen it recently, but it's even still surprising, like how good it is, like how well it holds up, and how adorable the kids are. It's like, damn it, this this movie's got so much charm to it. Like it 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 was really oh, the good. The critics absolutely roasted it, <laughs> which is another fun. We're just point in all we're just movies. slowly bubbling with hate over Ebert's or Siskel's reviews, just mm. for every kids movie. It's just two grown men who hate every kids movie. <laughs> that's, that's and we're fair. two grown men hating them for hating it. So it's a, it's a good relationship we have going. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, I recently saw. I think it was Ebert's review of Home Alone. Uh, it was mm-hmm. like so. He's just like. This movie is terrible. The plot doesn't make sense. There's too many conveniences, <laughs> but the kid was fine. I'm <laughs> just like, well, okay. They're so annoyed at every kid. It's that you you can tell already. They're getting like their their list of movies coming up, and they're just already mad about the kids one. So they go and just like, what the hell is this? Like you're wasting my time. Oh, a kid who can surf? Yeah, give me a break. Yeah. Like every the, movie, they're just mad. <laughs> they were like our age when <laughs> when they were reviewing them in the '90s. It's like. Take it easy, I, man. All right. Yeah, like <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna get a, a heart attack. Um, <laughs> ooh, uh, yeah. So, um, have, can you let listeners know where to find you guys? Yeah. So uh, for for the uh, the interweb users, we've got we thought this was good dot com. Otherwise, we're on Instagram at we thought this was good. We have a Facebook page, and um, I think we're on, we're going to, well, so we're on YouTube and our first season was uh, just the audio podcast, but now for the second season, we'll have video too. Nice. So, uh, so YouTube and then yeah, Apple, Spotify, you know, wherever you, you get your podcast. <sighs> hmm. Oh, wow. Any, is there anything, cause again, I'm not the best of our interviewers. No, anything no. that I didn't ask that you want to tell our listeners about your podcast or anything in general? Take the take the platform to just go on a rant about uh, freeing whales and. Or... I think uh, every I think everyone should take this opportunity, not even because of our podcast, but just to revisit some of your childhood favorites and mm. just just yeah, to see. Like, hold on. I love that you guys are doing like everything nineties yeah. because I think there is such a pure nostalgia for that time frame, mm-hmm. and I don't know why it's ninety specific. Because mm-hmm. I don't know what year you were born in, but we were born mid eighties. Yeah. But I still fully identify as like a nineties kid. Right. And so to see some of that stuff coming back, even like the Furby being remade oh or like God. all of these things that are trickling back into mm-hmm. pop culture again is Take wild to about. see. Yeah. Why and how is is the Furby? <laughs> yes, back. exactly. And may I know the Furby does not hold up because my daughter got one at a garage sale and it is a nightmare. It never shuts the fuck up. It is the, constantly the jabbering. Well, it's it's I don't know if it's like the brand new one, but it's at okay. least from like a few years ago, uh-huh. and it never shuts the fuck up. It's terrible. <laughs> Do not. Some things are not meant to be brought back. <laughs> uh, and it's weird how it just turns on without the batteries on. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what she said. So she gets freaked out. We're like, it's uh, okay, okay, all right. Let's into the garbage with it. <laughs> back and from once you came. Yeah, you, you just need to find, or well, I mean, uh, you gotta, do you have an incinerator in your house like Kevin McAllister had? <laughs> I need to get one. Yeah. Well, we're not too far from the Home Alone house. It's in Winnetka, yeah. so I'll just have to take a drive down there and see if they'll let us use it. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Um, cool. Well, uh, yeah, um, we, I was born in 89, Andrew was born in 88. So, okay. we're, yeah, so we're, 80s, yeah. we were kids, kids, uh, mm-hmm. we were children when in the nineties, which we came back to it cause we were like, yeah, that's, he's a veterinarian. I'm a, a winemaker. And it was just like, we have no, nothing in common anymore. So let's go back <laughs> to our childhood. Right. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Uh, so to look at it from that perspective, learn more about what we didn't, weren't really cognizant about. And, um, now it's just a lot of me talking about Power Rangers for some reason. Yeah, uh, that's fine. That's uh, fine. and speaking of things from my childhood, uh, Doug, uh, one of the first three Nicktoons, I believe, um, oh, we brought incredible. you on 
to talk about uh, the season four, episode 10 episode, Doug's Christmas story, which is one of the mm. final one of the Nickelodeon run. Wow. I saw that when I was looking at the image, I was like, was this, is it the end of the show? It's like, it's like pretty much right at the end. Yeah. So uh, this, this iteration of the show, I think they ran for two or three more seasons on ABC as oh, Doug. Did not know that. Um, I think he graduated to high school or middle, later middle school. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Or maybe they consider the later seasons part of the same show, but it was it was different. It mm. just wasn't right. And, no, but uh, yeah. Um, but what are your memories of the show? Doug and Rugrats were like my one A and one B. I think solid. for cartoons, absolutely solid. And Doug, I haven't seen in probably twenty five years. Yeah. Rugrats, I just saw uh, reruns of lit recently and to me that still holds up yeah but this was the first doug episode i've seen in decades yeah so it was wild i mean the i think doug's voice wasn't what i remember to be exactly i wrote down i when i was watching i was like that's fry that's fry from futurama like immediately like my mind jumped to fry it is, it is billy west yeah <laughs> and that's when that's how i was like well let me look this up and i was like oh yeah okay he does everyone's voices but immediately i was like sounds kind of like fry to me <laughs> wow over my head during the rewatch i didn't even think about that <laughs> Um, yeah, and uh, for those that don't know, uh, Doug is an animated television series and sitcom uh, created by Jim Jenkins, produced by Jumbo Pictures from 1991, and it, here it says to 99 on Nickelodeon and ABC. Uh, like we were saying, the first four seasons was on Nickelodeon. That's where Doug's voice was, Billy West. And then once it okay. moved to ABC slash Disney, um, it, he was voiced by... Thomas McHugh, I think. Mm. Uh, the voice did not sound as good as Billy West. Mm. No. Um, it's never as good as it was. And uh, it, the show revolves around Douglas Doug Funny, an 11 year old boy who wants to be another face in the crowd, but by possessing a vivid, ma- a vivid imagination and strong sense of right and wrong, he is more likely to stand out. This is Wikipedia's description <laughs> of the show. Um, he keeps a journal, which he treats as an autobiography, and records his experiences over the series. And um, his, it's him and his family. They move to uh, Bluffington, which is the town that they live in. Mm-hmm. Uh, not in any specific state, but it's loosely based off of Richmond, Virginia, mm-hmm. where the oh, creator yeah. was raised. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's just kids' everyday life. And he has a vivid imagination, a bully, a girl next door that he's in love with, and a best friend named Skeeter, and a dog named Porkchop, and a that, bitch of a sister named mean. Judy. <laughs> and we were all in love with Patty Mayonnaise. I don't, I don't care who you were. Everyone mm. had a crush on Patty Mayonnaise. I had a crush on Patty Mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone hated Roger Klotz. There's no, there's, he was oh, getting under everyone's right gun. And I was, I will say, well, of this episode, I was surprised I didn't get one Roger Klotz appearance. True. It was, it was I mean, a little, it, it kind of like bummed me about. I was like, I was waiting for him to come in and ruin the day. And I was like, oh, all right, I guess, I guess no, we're not, getting, we're not getting Roger. Yeah, he didn't even, he didn't even show up in the background. No, 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 no. no not at yeah. All. Uh, but we did get a, a rich girl, a BB, the rich girl was oh, the, the, the blood, primary yeah. antagonist, I guess, yeah. or technically your dad was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, uh, you know it. I also liked Judy. She uh, as the drama over over dramatic older sister. Um, it, she, she intrigued me. Uh, <laughs> I, I like the music, the music yes. that plays when she comes in too. Like yeah. some of these things came back right away. Yeah, and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. Well, even I was talking to Jim. Even watching this episode, I was like, is this how fast this show always used to move? Like it, I, for whatever reason, it felt like it was just like cruising. Like, mm. <laughs> like it was all. It was the beginning, then the next thing, the next thing. All of a sudden, it was the end. And I know it's a car. You know, it's only half hour, but I was like, man, this is. We're, I'm used to these slower movies that drag a bit. Like this is flying. <laughs> yeah, without those uh, commercial interruptions, it's just yeah. like it's done. <laughs> That's true. That's um, true. Yeah, uh, and then Andrew had a thing on Doug, which. I will insert right now and uh, just pause the video as we stare at the screen. And thank you, Andrew, for those words of wisdom about Doug. Um, Should we get into the episode? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, Doug's Christmas Story. Um, They start, they're playing hockey, uh, as as you do in colder states, I I guess. Um, You guys might be more familiar with this than I. Uh, Playing, they're playing ice on a a frozen lake, uh, pond even. 
And BB, like an idiot, is trying to go get their pine cone hockey puck uh, by the ice that um, has already... It's thin ice. There's a thin ice sign. It has fallen through the water. And, uh, like, there's very clearly a hole where she's going to walk over to and fall into. Uh, right. Not a problem with that. Yeah. Uh, pork chop as uh, Doug's dog, who is almost smarter than, I would say, the majority of the town, uh, comes <laughs> running up, tries to stop her. But since he's a dog, is only capable of doing charades. And uh, <laughs> being a rich girl, she has, doesn't have time for a dog like that. And um, moves past him. Uh, so he bites her uh, so she won't fall in. She, he, he bites her and drags her back away from the edge of the, the hole so she won't fall into the ice. Um, BB starts howling in pain. Uh, the, the random green kid, that sounds racist, um, <laughs> is, is like, I saw everything. Pork chop bit her like a madman. Um <laughs> And uh, the, that's how the episode starts. And, yeah, so yeah. It was a it was a hell of a cold open. We didn't even get to the title card. I said Pork Chop's already committing assault. Like we had, we had to get to a title first. Let's come on. Let's set the stage. <laughs> right. And uh, what what a theme song. The did oh, oh, so it's, good. It's top. Top. Yep. Top and five. the animation with like the line and the lasso and it's all so that. Good. It's spot on. Brings you right back. I, uh, before we go any further, I do have to say I do remember the they had like a couple songs, uh, not not in this episode, but just like in general, they had like the uh, episode where they were like in those giant suits, like um, the like big, the thing heads. big, yes, like the talking <laughs> heads, and like they had uh, drumming on a trash can. Oh my uh, god! Thank you. Yeah. Street light. Absolute classic. Yeah. And then uh, Killer, Killer Tofu. tofu. <laughs> yep. Yes, Killer Tofu. <laughs> Still bangs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Couldn't 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 get through this episode without saying that. No. Uh, um, Was yeah. it The Beats? Is that their name? The, the Beats. Beats. Yeah. yeah. Um, I bet you could find like an orange Nickelodeon CD soundtrack where it's got all the hits on it. I feel like I bought that at some point. Like probably. all the Nickelodeon vhs tapes were orange like oh i'm feeling 100 years old as i'm saying this like everything everything with that bright nickelodeon orange and i guarantee there's some orange soundtrack that has the dugs uh beef, killer tofu. yeah killer tofu and uh, banging on a street light or whatever that sounds called i mean but, it was early enough it was probably on cassette as well and uh, that bright orange cassette. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'll only uh, be 82 i know i mean i know i did have i had the rugrats the movie soundtrack yes. on, on cd that had that song with, uh, was it Maya and uh, Blackstreet? The one where yeah. they're like, the music video where they're jumping around. Take me <laughs> there. Right in the I want to go yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. See, some classics never go out of style. Still stuck in my head. It might, <laughs> it might also be because I listened to that song on repeat for at least a month. Um, uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Um, Doug takes pork chop. chop yeah, pork chop home starts yelling at him for biting BB and uh, is like, yeah, I guess you probably just wanted to play or something, but you're not supposed to bite anyone. And mm. pork chop tries to, again, explain it with charades, uh, what he did. And Doug's like, this isn't funny. What are you doing? <laughs> um, well, he sold out pork chop immediately. Like everyone's, you know, getting on him. And then mm. throughout the episode, he's like, well, pork chop would never do that. I was like, well, yeah, Doug, maybe right. 20 minutes ago, you should have said that. <laughs> when you sent him to his igloo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the yeah. time to vouch for him. Um, let's see. But, you know, he was busy too. Doug had to go Christmas shopping with his sister, Judy. Yeah. Uh, who pulls up and is like, we only got two hours left to, to Christmas shop. Because apparently right. it's like either Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. um, and then it cuts to the former mayor. <laughs> Oh, uh, I loved the mayor. Don't even get me started with the former mayor. I loved him. <laughs> I, also, this is, I looks like the line that the sister said. She goes, "Honestly, Doug, you're slower than Christmas." She like, like you just <laughs> asked him to come to the car. He started walking. Like, but give him a break. Yeah. We but only yes, got two hours to shop. Yes, uh, the mayor. <laughs> mayor. Um, you know, as a kid, I wouldn't have thought he was designed after anyone. Uh, <laughs> now you do. <laughs> yeah. Now he has former presidential vibes for some reason. I said he told <laughs> this. His story was foretold. Donald Trump was foretold in the Doug in the, it, in the Doug cartoons. <laughs> so crazy. Um, and and then it's like I I didn't even remember that he wasn't mayor anymore. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's so it like it it's so like on the nose that you would think that they made it recently. You're like. 
I actually stood there for a second watch. I was like, oh. And he has a button that says reelect. And mm -hmm. so like it's, it's way too time. Yeah. And and even uh, he's like uh, he's tan for being a man in a winter climate. It all checks out. It's it it's all checks out. It's insane. <laughs> um and then someone calls into the show and tells him about the dog attack of the port girl um that was attacked. And then we get, uh, oh, and then he clearly is about to raise the alarms. And the current mayor is out of town, who I, I think I put together was Mr. Dink's wife. Oh, Tippie. sad. Is that, I missed that. Because um, she was also out of town, and I'm pretty sure they said it was Mayor Tippy. That's um, good. Good detective yeah. work. Yes. Uh, yeah. I didn't Google it, which is probably like the smarter thing to do. No. Um, but Me yeah, I vaguely remember her being coming mayor at some point. But yes. Uh, since she's out of town, apparently he's able to just rally the troops and he's mayor um, now. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, mayor. Mayor. <laughs> that's how it I, works, right? I said, how small is Bluffington? Like that the dog bite happened and meet not only does the whole town know we're calling into the radio station, the mayor's on it. Like this is this is a some a real small town. Former mayor. Uh, <laughs> former I, current mayor. I saw some trivia about the Dinks, which I didn't know before. Incredible. And if you guys knew this, it absolutely blows my mind. But that DINK is an acronym. No. And it stands for Double Income No Kids. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Did you know that? I did a long time. Yeah. Oh, I, wow. Yeah. Good research on but you I guys. completely wow. forgot. I, <laughs> so just that they had a lot of money. And I'm like, I totally, I mean, there's no way that would no. have even come across. Now, as brain. a 12 year old, I can, right. may, I, may I note? <laughs> yeah, no, that's something I learned, I think, in my 20s. And then wow. I wow. erased by the time I got to my 30s. Um, Good call. And how do you guys feel about that as parents? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems pretty spot on. Dink seems pretty happy for not having kids and a lot of money. Like, it seems like you did it, right? Fair, fair. Um, <laughs> I have so, two kids and no money, so I don't know. You know, I guess that, I guess that there's an acronym for that somewhere, but it's not as uh, snappy as Dink. No. Uh, I, we could try to make one that that is more snappy. Uh, but first, Doug and Judy sh Christmas shopping. Judy is um, they're they're looking for golf clubs for their dad. Um, <laughs> Judy's looking at a nine iron, but they can't find one. They make a joke. Or she makes a joke about getting three, three irons and then eventually gets two, a two and a seven iron because they're cheaper. <laughs> that checks right. out. I don't know how yeah. two clubs is cheaper than one. Though. I mean, that, that Matt, the math's yeah. not adding up there uh, uh, as, a, as a bad golfer myself. I don't, I don't see that. I don't see that working out. Uh, yeah. If you got, <laughs> if you got a two and a seven iron for the price of a nine That's iron. That's a good deal. Yeah. Or the price of three, nine iron or three, three irons. That's. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, yeah. uh, Doug gets a hat for pork chop. And uh, then by the time they get home, the fake former mayor takes over for the real mayor who is on vacation, like I just said. And they're hauling pork chop away uh, by the police. The yeah, yeah, I guess. I didn't realize that part of the story was that he was going to get put down. And I was like, oh, yeah. This is getting dark. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like this 90s is... cartoons didn't fuck around. Like, it was. It wasn't he's off to jail. It was, oh, we'll be, we'll actually be putting him to death. So yeah. swallow that. I mean, that's another reason why I put this on the list is because <laughs> Andrew, who again, isn't here, yeah. uh, veterinarian. So oh. uh, <laughs> Andrew, your thoughts, is this ring true? Yeah, I'm sure Are you he, putting down? <laughs> he would have weighed in on that. Um, yeah. And then Judy, Judy. Uh, so they're having like a family meeting after Fort Chop gets hauled away and trying to figure out what to do. And Judy, Judy gets off the line. It's always the quiet ones, which mm, right. I, I, I laughed at. <laughs> yeah, I was like, a little tip of the hat. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bluff is going to charge, uh, is pressing charges against Pork Chop and uh, by proxy Doug, I guess. Yeah, um, I didn't understand yeah, that. It seemed odd. <laughs> Um, Doug's parents, uh, plan is to get a petition and have everyone sign it and saying pork chop is a good dog. Uh, again, like a day before Christmas. Cause, yeah. uh, uh, pork chop is scheduled to be executed on, on Christmas Eve. <laughs> you know, when you, uh, when you kill dogs who've done one bad thing and they've been uh, one person <laughs> after, of course, a trial in court, uh, right. for, for the dog. Cause every that, that dog was, has his day. I wanted to go on a whole sidebar to one, one thing being her Doug's parents say to him, well, honey, let's go. We'll go petition the town. He goes, no, no mom, dad, I have to do this. It's like, Doug, we don't have time. <laughs> yeah, you need your parents. <laughs> it's it's the day before. Use your parents. Like this is no time for pride. Like 
get everyone you can to get your signatures. Yeah. No, mom and dad, you sit here and do nothing. <laughs> right. I'll take it from here. Thank As you. you always do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, he, Mr. Dink signs it and then no one else does, uh, that he goes to. Yeah. Um, I guess one, not all good, not all press is good press cause they got on the radio about it and no one wanted anything to do with it. So true. Um, one, I, some, some of the faces were familiar. Like I think the lady that's like, this is supposed to be a happy time. Why don't you come back, back to me after Christmas? <laughs> then <laughs> I'll sign. Dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but sh she's like the deaf neighbor, uh, mm. and there was an episode with her in it, I swear. Um, <laughs> Doug stops and watches a reenactment on a show. They already have like a crime solver. Oh, the style reenactment, reenactment. The re the reenactment was excellent. Uh, the woman's just violently <laughs> thrown around by the dog. <laughs> That's how I remember it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Doug might've been there and been like, I remember things differently, but no, that was pretty much how they, they animated it. Right. <laughs> Um, he runs into Mr. Bluff, uh, at the hospital cause he tries to see BB. Um, and he blocks, he, Mr. Bluff blocks him from going in the room. And as he's leaving, he's just like, I don't like dogs. They don't have any money. They don't <laughs> know what money is. That's yeah. what I wrote down in my notes. Yeah. I was like, that's tough, but fair. If, if you're not going to like dogs, I guess one of the reasons, the reason they don't have holds up. <laughs> that's the reason sound. <laughs> Uh, but also like rich white guy coded. That does sound a little, <laughs> it could be something, something sure. else that he's talking about. Um, and then he tells Doug to get a new best friend. Uh, after <laughs> Doug's like, he's my best friend, sir. Get a new one after I kill this one. Yep. Yeah. As you do. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so then Doug turns to the only people that he can, the people in his head. Um, mm -hmm. Quail Man, the whole Qu gang's there. Quail Man, Smash Adams, which is his Bond persona, and I don't I, like. I said I didn't Google anything because I don't remember what his Indiana Jones persona mm -hmm. is. I don't even know. Yeah. But, but I did see one of the fun facts was this is I think one of or the only episode where all of his personas oh, are together. Yeah, yeah, we're all I think the so. same. The yeah. brain trust. <laughs> yeah, the, the collective. Uh, and he wants them to help get Pork Chop back uh, in mm -hmm. his head, so they. Cut to black, which would be a time for commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when it comes back, oh, they they start they try to help him. Uh, he, I think the James Bond persona is like you should find someone that does gadgets in the real world, and he shows up at the twins. Uh, yeah, forgot the, about the twins. Yeah, I did too. Uh, creepy, creepy twins. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in all fairness, to not again, not to keep uh, harkening back to our podcast, there are so many movies that we've now gone through that there's always a friend or somebody who's got like a secret lab or like all this equipment. We're always like, where? Where did this come? Where from? did this come? Where do they have the funding for this? <laughs> the who's man in the chair, oh, yeah. exploding cherries. <laughs> like you should be putting this to better use somewhere if else. It's, if it's a '90s show or cartoon or movie. Somebody's doing science experiments somewhere and we're going to go hang out with them at some point because we're going to need their help. And, and they're not like a main part of your friend no, group. No. They're the ones that you turn to <laughs> yeah. when you're like, oh, I actually need something from you. We're coming to use you again. You know why we're here. Come on, yeah. let's just let's get this over with. Um, and so he, they're like, we've combined all of our weapon tech with our father's bakery items. <laughs> just like, uh, and Doug's like, I don't, or his plan is to sneak into the pound and rescue pork chop. Uh, and he's like, I don't, I don't want to kill anyone. I, I don't think he says that exactly. I think he said, I don't want to hurt anyone, but mm. they're just like, oh, and then just move everything off of the table except for <laughs> their smoke bomb That's no fun. cupcake. Yeah. Which, in all fairness, once someone puts the cop puts in his mouth, you probably killed him now. So, in all oh, right, the yeah. one thing that you chose to not kill someone with, you probably killed somebody. So. Smoke bombs still <laughs> explode. They're, they are bombs. Um, yeah. Uh, and of course, immediately in the next scene at the dog pound, uh, there's a giant sign that says no cupcakes allowed. Yes. <laughs> that was the only pastry. You couldn't have brought anything else? A donut? Yeah. yeah bring in a croissant, anything you please, but not, yeah. not be no damned if you bring a cupcake. Uh, and he's also brought Skeeter along, who he has fake being sick, even though that doesn't matter anyways, because the guy Not gets a needed. phone call. No. Yeah. But I will say the 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 Skeeter best friend imprinted on my mind to where if anyone was anyone's best friend in the 90s, you were Skeeter. Yeah. Like, if I didn't mm -hmm. know your name, that was your buddy Skeeter. Like, this show had a str uh, stranglehold on the best friend Skeeter title. <laughs> fair, fair. Um, 
And uh, so Doug sneaks through the different layers of uh, dog penitentiary, um, finds pork chop in the very, very bad dog wing under yes. maximum security. <laughs> uh, that, well, that was like uh, Hannibal Lecter in <laughs> Science of the Lambs when they have him Pretty in like, the yeah. last cage. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, the guy eats the, the smoke bomb cupcake should have died. Uh, he just has smoke <laughs> pouring out of his ears. Um, which again, I I, I, yeah, probably should have died. Um, <laughs> and then they, uh, catch Doug before he can even talk to pork chop. Uh, so Doug sad thinks back to his first or one of his first Christmases where he got pork chop mm-hmm. and then gets again super sad as you guys are saying nick tunes go hard uh he thinks about how pork chop will be dead <laughs> nick Lillian, we did not have to go we did not have to do it so dirty <laughs> there's a full-on tombstone and like uh <laughs> it, like a scrooge-esque uh and it's raining <laughs> yeah see people complain about pixar these days this it didn't start with pixar it Let's go back to the 90s where mm-hmm. cartoons were killing off your favorite loved ones. <laughs> uh, so Doug. Oh, and after this, uh, after this horrible, morbid image of his dead dog, um, <laughs> we get to the trial. Uh, they have a dog psychologist who um, oh, run of the mill. You can find him. Every his time. eyes are mm-hmm. close together. Looks, looks angry. Checks out. Uh, another reason why I wanted Andrew here for this one. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, Doug finally figures out through charades, finally, finally, uh, that Porkchop wants him to go to the pond to, um, but then BB comes in with a cast and her wheelchair and she's put on the stand to say, uh, that she was injured by the dog and everyone's like, Oh my God. Uh, even though BB is trying to, um, trying to help out like she, she was like but that's it wasn't that bad and then her lawyer just shuts her up immediately well, um, it's like how doug doug got all upset and he's like let's go to the lake and then the judge says we can't it's christmas eve i was like you decided to have the trial like, that this yeah. is it's already inconvenient like you might, what are we talking about and it, it was immediate like it's, <laughs> it's the next day uh mm. and yeah um the oh the judge was like does anyone here speak dog how are we <laughs> going to know what the dog's saying um, come on judge yeah uh let's see doug, doug oh yeah doug manages to win everyone over by giving a speech about caring in community and all the times that pork chop has helped up out everyone including lending a woman someone twenty dollars <laughs> uh taking care of uh two children while uh, no. <laughs> a single mother leaves town um and uh he helped the judge's daughter walk again yes he did. he's a linchpin in that community like <laughs> yes well, why are we did. why are we even in trial right now everyone knows how good he is like well, yeah, settle this out of court why were they so quick to say let's put him down when he's done all of these things <laughs> I think they just love to kill dogs. I mean, let's just let's just call a spade a spade. They just they were just looking to to end an animal's life. <laughs> I just wrote down is Porkchop the most responsible adult in bluffing? Bar team? none. He mm-hmm. is a physical therapist. Apparently, <laughs> he's a babysitter. Like a he practice. just does every role really well, <laughs> including saving these irresponsible idiots from skating on thin ice. And where are their parents? Where are the parents? Mm-hmm. Huh? He needs I to work mean, on the back to the parents. Yeah. It he wasn't the 90s. Trade, though. It, it wasn't was the 90s. Yeah. If it is the 90s, they, they're, those parents are divorced, or they're not around, or the dad's an asshole. Like, there's just mm-hmm. things that are written in stone. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I mean, even even from the beginning, this looked like the the pond that Charlie Brown and his friends skated on. Ooh, so. Good call. Of course, it definitely yeah. had It that probably one. was the same one. <laughs> Damn peanuts. Uh, so they get, they get to the pond, and... Uh, they ask BB where she falls in. Of course, Patty's like, "Oh, I remember where she <laughs> I almost died by the pine cone." <laughs> yeah, by the pine because the single pine cone still yeah. there. You know, the pine cone because it's the one we have. Yeah, it's not I like we're was, playing hockey with a r- rich woman. <laughs> I said it was criminal that it took nineteen and a half minutes for us to get Patty mayonnaise. I was like, "How how is it taking this long yeah. to get our you know our secondary character?" That's no Skeeter and barely any Patty. Mm-hmm. Criminal. Um, and yeah, uh, I think she has two lines. One is there's the pine cone, pine cone. <laughs> <laughs> and pork chop must've been trying to save her. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> voice of reason, logic. patty mayonnaise. Uh, so Always. BB goes over and crutches on the ice, and then <laughs> no one stops. <laughs> <laughs> no one stops. And then they not, let her fall in. Yeah. <laughs> not not even not even just a person walking out there, but a person on crutches going on the ice, just like eh, let's just see how this. Hold on, let's see how this plays out. <laughs> Yeah, well, they're all so excited because Pork Chop's like the only one being like, she can't go out there. Oh my god! And he's and uh, I think her baby's father's like, you see, you see, he's crazy. He's trying to kill her again. Kill this dog now. <laughs> yes. Um, and then she falls into the into the water. Pork Chop dives in after her, uh, pulls her out. Uh, the again, small dog uh, rescues uh, a strong. A got a big heart. 11, 12 year old child uh, wearing a cast. Um, and they both are immediately just given hugs and not blankets. Uh, <laughs> so but that's like once they're off the ice, too. I don't see anyone moving until like poor Trump <laughs> no, drags her to safety. <laughs> they're all just like standing watching. Dad's just fine with it. Like, all right, well. Well, she fell in. No oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy a new daughter. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Porchop rescues her, gets exonerated. And then, uh, yeah, he gets to have Christmas with his family. Uh, the bluffs come over and say, can we repay you somehow? Yeah, and you can. <laughs> Here's one way. <laughs> one giant feast for all the Literally. dogs of the pound. Um, <laughs> and yeah, uh, Porkchop gets them to do a, a feast for the, the dogs in the pound. And then the radio mayor gets everyone adopted. Um, Happy ending. Yeah. Um, and as, as you see the cliches in all of the nineties movies, you're going back to, or nineties and eighties movies, you're going back to look mm. at uh, doing all these Christmas episodes. We've mm. come across a bunch of cliches. One of them Ooh, is, ending with a song because you don't know how to just end the episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was very uh, Grinch. It felt very Grinchy, like the way they had the table, everyone around it. Like it felt, I was waiting for the bar room. Bar, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, unfortunately they do a deck the halls and then end with a season's greeting card. Like all the ABC shows had, I think that mm. year, um, which is weird because this was on Nickelodeon. <laughs> And just wholesome, just a whole foreshadowing. <laughs> exactly. It was only Someone three, knew. three more episodes. Um, yeah. Uh, final thoughts on this episode of Doug. Well, we let usually so on our podcast, we'll we'll have some topics we go through, like uh, things will hit, and one of the ones that we'll usually get on is problematic. And <laughs> the one thing I wrote down for problematic was, you know, I I don't know that we're going to be putting down pork chop we're gonna be putting him to death over one bite like for what he's done for this community maybe we let it slide like let's <laughs> let's give him the benefit of the doubt you the bigger picture <laughs> I, and again this is why i want andrew here but i remember hearing something about oh once a dog bites there that's like the point where you're like oh they can't be trusted anymore mm. Um, which i don't think is true but uh it might have been something that i heard on this episode wow if Pork Chop is watching my kids, I'm going to go to bed for him. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if he loans me 20 bucks, I'll make sure to, uh, to stick it's up. the bar is low. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I so do. I wonder, because Doug's imagination runs wild, I wonder how much of what Pork Chop does is real. Oh, mm -hmm. is this like a fight club situation? Or like, like Calvin and Hobbes even. Like, <laughs> what is real? reality what oh. is not is he just a normal dog or is he this crazy amazing like half human half dog animal because he does daydream and then you see like in the pound there's like cells upon cells upon cells sure. and so i i just now looking at it for nope. this episode i just hole. don't know what's real yeah <laughs> i'm trying to question my own identity <laughs> also there were other dogs that spoke english like they were like <laughs> Poor Trump that Seems way, odd. rough. Yeah, <laughs> something's, right. not, something's not right about this. this Doug funny. Yeah, the dogs he, are pointing. He does seem funny. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. Uh. Any. Yeah, any I, uh, as I say, I loved Doug growing up. I don't know that I ever saw this, or at least it didn't spark an memory of seeing this. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember if I had seen this before or not either. I repressed it. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm sorry. Yeah, I definitely saw this one, um, yeah. and it was traumatizing as a child. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a Did you have a family dog that uh, 
You held no, a little tighter that night. I think that's why I didn't get a dog. I <laughs> ended up with a bird. We can't get it. We can't get a dog. It's gonna be put to death when it bites one of the neighbors. <laughs> yeah. It's not me fight clubbing myself, <laughs> pretending to be a dog and biting the neighbors. Um no, it, was fun. it was fun to revisit that show because like you said, Doug, like all my friends, me, like we all like there wasn't anyone that I knew that didn't watch that right, show. Like right. they, everyone liked it for some reason or another. And so being able to revisit it and just just like have the song kick on the intro and just be like, damn, I'm being taken back. Like it's it, it there's a core memory in there with this show. I yeah, I I agree. I don't think I've seen Doug since it moved to ABC and um it was it was nice to go back. It was yeah. like seeing, a, yeah. seeing an old friend. Like an old uh, pair of holy sweatpants you put on. <laughs> exactly. Um and I guess that's it for these holiday editions of Namely 90s. Uh thank you to Nick and Jim of We Thought This Was Good for coming on. Thank you for having uh, us. Yeah, absolutely. Can one of you let us know where to find our, or no, sorry. Can one of you let our listeners know where to find you? Yes. Go to the interwebs. We thought this was good.com. Uh, you can find us on YouTube at, uh, we thought this was good. And then we have an Instagram page, Facebook, and, uh, anywhere that you listen to your podcasts, Apple podcast, Spotify, the whole nine. Awesome. And as always, you can find us on Instagram and YouTube at Namely 90s with a 90s and tell us how your holidays are going. Uh, also, Blue Sky now, I guess. And if you'd like to support the show, please check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash Namely 90s, also with a 90s. Finally, you can contact us through our website, Namely90s.com, maybe in the new year if Andrew ever gets that contact page up. And uh, please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Audible, Dog Pound, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeartPods, and wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Brandon. Andrew's not here. And thank you one final time to Nick and Jim of We Thought This Was Good. Uh, thank you all for listening to our fourth annual 12 Days of Christmas specials here on Naomi 90s. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy and we'll New catch year. you next Monday for Season 3 of Naomi 90s and Season 2 of We Thought This Was Good. Thanks, guys. Happy New Thank Year. You. And Thank a partridge you. in a pear tree. <laughs>